Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will be discussing brain hemorrhages, their types, where they occur and how to identify them on CT scans. The explanation is simple, clear and especially helpful for radiology students and professionals. So please watch the video till the end and if you find it helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now let's begin. Brain hemorrhage is an emergency condition in which a ruptured blood vessel causes bleeding inside the brain. When this happens, blood escapes into the brain tissue or surrounding areas where it shouldn't be. This bleeding increases pressure inside the closed skull and that's dangerous. As pressure builds up, it reduces blood flow to the healthy brain areas which means less oxygen reaches to the brain cells. Brain cells are extremely sensitive. Even a few minutes without oxygen can lead to irreversible cell death. This is what makes brain hemorrhages so life threatening. It can quickly affect vital centers that control breathing, heart rate and consciousness. Without immediate treatment, the damage can spread leading to coma, permanent disability or even death. High blood pressure and trauma are the most common causes. High blood pressure weakens artery walls over time making them more prone to the rupture. Trauma such as fall or road accident can tear vessels especially in anger or elderly patients. There are two main areas where bleeding can occur in the brain. First, bleeding within your skull but outside the brain tissue. This means the blood collects between the protective layers surrounding the brain, not in the brain itself. It also known as extra axial hemorrhage and it includes EDH, SDH and SH, epidural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Second, bleeding inside the brain tissue itself. It also called as intra axial hemorrhage. This involves direct damage to the brain and can be more serious depending on the location and size of the bleed. So, to truly understand where and how these types of bleed occurs, you first need to understand the basic anatomy of the skull and brain's protective layers. Now we are going to discuss about meninges. Meninges are three membrane layers that cover and protect your brain and spinal cord. They are known as dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater. Dura mater is the outer layer closest to your skull and it acts like a strong shield that protects your brain from external injuries. Arachnoid matter is the middle layer and it contains the cerebrospinal fluid which helps absorb shock and allow the brain to float inside the skull. Pia matter is the inner layer closest to your brain tissue and it supplies oxygen and nutrients to the brain tissue. There are three important spaces around the brain that we need to understand. One epidural space, two subdural space, three subarachnoid space. Together, these layers play a crucial role in protecting the brain. And between these layers, there are small spaces that play important role in protection, cushioning and blood flow. Epidural space is the space between the skull and the dura mater. It's normally a potential space which means it doesn't contain anything unless something pours it open like fluid or blood. Subdural space. It is a space between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. It's also a potential space and isn't usually visible unless something fills it. Subarachnoid space. This is the space between arachnoid matter and the pia matter which is closest to the brain. This space contains cerebrospinal fluid that cushions the brain and removes waste. These spaces are important because they surround and protect the brain and knowing their anatomy helps in identifying where bleeding or injury has occurred. Now let's look at the actual layers and spaces around the brain. At the very top we have the skull which protects the brain from injury. Just beneath it is the dura matter, the top outer layer of the brain coverings. Under the dura is the arachnoid matter which looks like a spider web and below that tightly hugging the brain surface is the pia matter. Ok now let's understand the spaces between them. And here you can see the epidural space which lies between the skull and the dura matter. And the subdural space lies between the dura matter and arachnoid matter. And the last one is subarachnoid space. It is the space between subarachnoid and pia matter. These protective layers and spaces are key to understand how the brain is cushioned and how bleeding can affect it. Now that we have seen the layers and spaces around the brain, let's look at what happens when bleeding occurs within these spaces. They are classified based on where exactly the blood collects. Understanding the type of hemorrhage is crucial because it affects the patient's symptoms, treatment and prognosis. Let's begin with the first type, the epidural hemorrhage. It's also called epidural hematoma or EDH. It is a life-threatening emergency where blood collects between the skull and dura matter which is the outer protective layer covering of the brain. This usually happens due to head trauma obtained from an accident or fall which causes a rupture in an artery, commonly the middle meningeal artery. As blood builds up, it puts pressure on the brain which can quickly become dangerous if not treated immediately. Here we can see CT scan images of patients with epidural hemorrhage. Notice the lens shaped or biconvex hyperdense area. 
This is a collection of blood between the skull and dura mater. It usually appears bright on non contrasty as you can see in the images. This shape is the characteristic of epidural hemorrhage and it helps to differentiate it from other types of brain hemorrhage. This bleeding often causes a midline shift as visible in the middle image due to increased pressure on the brain. Early recognition on CT is crucial because timely surgical intervention can be life saving. This is subdural hemorrhage also known as subdural hematoma or SDH. It is a serious medical condition where blood collects between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. This type of bleeding usually occurs due to tearing of bridging veins often after trauma. As blood accumulates in this space it can increase pressure on the brain and cause neurological symptoms which may worsen over time if not treated. The red arrow points to a crescent shaped hyperdense area along the surface of the brain. This is where blood has collected between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater. Unlike epidural hematomas which are lens shaped, subdural hematomas spread more diffusely and can cross suture lines. In some images you can also notice a midline shift which indicates pressure on the brain due to bleeding. Next, subarachnoid hemorrhage. It is a type of bleeding that occurs in a space between the arachnoid and pia mater which are layers covering the brain. This space normally contains cerebrospinal fluid but in this condition blood leaks into it often due to a ruptured aneurysm or trauma. The bleeding increases pressure on the brain and can quickly become life threatening. Patients may present with a sudden severe headache along with nausea, vomiting or even loss of consciousness. Immediate medical attention is essential to manage the bleeding and prevent serious complications. This is a CT scan showing subarachnoid hemorrhage. You can see hyperdense areas appearing bright within the sulci, cisterns and basal cisterns. These are the areas where blood has accumulated in the subarachnoid space which lies between the arachnoid and pia mater. Subarachnoid bleeds like this are usually caused by trauma or ruptured aneurysm and they need urgent and medical attention. Okay, next move into intracerebral hemorrhage. It is a bleeding inside the brain tissue itself. It's often caused by high blood pressure, trauma or a burst blood vessel. This bleeding builds up quickly, damaging brain cells and raising pressure inside the skull. Symptoms can hit suddenly, headache, weakness, confusion or even loss of consciousness. It's a life-threatening emergency that needs fast medical help. These are the CT scan images showing example of intracerebral hemorrhage. You can see the bright white areas that represents acute bleeding within the brain tissue. This type of hemorrhage is often caused by high blood pressure or trauma and can quickly increase pressure inside the skull early detection and management are crucial to prevent serious brain damage or death next intraventricular hemorrhage it is a serious condition where bleeding occurs inside the brain's ventricle these ventricles are fluid filled spaces that produce and circulate cerebrospinal fluid when bleeding happens here it can increase pressure inside the brain and lead to complications it is most commonly seen in premature infants but can also occur in adults due to trauma or stroke on a ct scan iuh is seen as bright areas within the normally dark ventricles due to presence of acute blood the ventricles which usually contain clear cerebrospinal fluid appear partially or completely filled with blood in these cases this abnormal brightness within the ventricular space is a key indicator of ivh and helps in assessing severity and location of the bleed